I was digging through this stuff and found this light that was sent some time ago by Thomas Nagy. I think this is probably the first time I've actually pronounced his name correctly. He's another YouTuber, an electrician. I'll put a link to his channel down below. But this is uh, Sylvania, a prominent brand, a Canadian brand, believe it or not. But this will almost certainly just be mass produced in China. And he said, this is one of many faulty products I got. Uh, and this one in particular, it's just flickering, uh, glowing dimly. Sometimes it flickers up to full brightness and then goes out again. And this is the type of ceiling light that comes with this sort of dome cover. Just the usual, what they might call a ceiling bulkhead. It's notable that this one actually has a little silicon ceiling rail ring on it, which is quite neat. So... Let me show you what this thing's actually doing by turning the light off and then you'll see what it's actually up to. So when I turn the light off, you can see the LEDs are just glowing dimly. They're ramping up and down. This one here, in this area here, is notably looking a bit bluer than the others, suggesting it's got phosphor damage. So I'm going to bring the lights back. Watch your eyes. The light is back. Let's explore. So this is a 12 watt fitting, and that's kind of uh, borne out by the power supply, which says output is 150 milliamps at 80 volts max. This is a current limited supply. It will be measuring the current going out, and uh, it will have a, a range of voltage it can operate at. So this is probably not just rated for the 12 watt. It may be used in lower power fixtures as well. But let's bring the kink calculator in and do some maths. So we've got 150 milliamps, which is 0.15 times the rated maximum output voltage of 80 volts equals 12 watts. Okay, which is what this thing is rated at. Uh, Sylvania Sil Circle 12 watt, 800 lumen worm white. So one of the differences between these uh, professional landfill lights, because I've got a pet hate about these, this is the light fitting that when it goes wrong, you can't just take the cover off because the cover does just bain it cap off and lifts off. You can't just go in and change a lamp. With these, you're going to have to remove the whole fitting. And that means that homeowners then have either the choice and st every time they would have just normally changed a lamp, they have to either call an electrician or they have to have a go themselves. And that introduces the risk of electric shock. Now, talking about electric shocks, this uh, version is plastic covers. You see all the ones kind of sold from prominent brands here have the little plastic cover to stop you touching the LEDs because the LEDs are referenced to mains voltage. Uh, the ones that are imported directly from China via eBay and other sources quite often of this missing, it's just the bare LEDs, which has advantages because the LEDs are often screwed to the back and provide better heat sinking. But it does mean that if you had the cover off and you were poking about inside the power on, which is extremely silly anyway, then you could get a shock. Uh, this is also looking a bit brown here. Here's the next pet hate. These things are designed to fail. They could underrun them. They could have used double number of LEDs, they could have run those double number at half the power and they'd have lasted ages. But these things are designed to fail quite quickly, and they do fail quite quickly. Part of that is down to bad heat sinking, part of it is just really grilling these LEDs. Keep in mind, this whole fitting is rated about 12 watts. I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 24 LEDs, so the LEDs being run at about half watt each, which is quite a lot. Unless you get decent heat sinking. Is there decent heat sinking? No. That telltale brown mark means this one has not been uh, making good con thermal contact with the back. If anything, a, a quick fix there might have been implying some sort of thermal paste or better still, that sort of, you know, that sort of spongy material that's uh, used to cup onto heat sinks, the heat sink uh, self-adhesive pads, that could have worked. But there's another thing. We'll take a look at this power supply. And we'll see if we can actually do something about this. But first of all, let's do a little hack. Let's see. This LED here is the one that's grilled. They're all, all the LEDs are in series. So that one feeling has taken out the whole fitting. I'm guessing it's that one. Uh, how can we test this? I can bridge that out. One moment, please. The soldier iron is up to temperature. I shall zoom down in this so we can explore this repair together. So the LED that was all baked crumbled off because it was baked. Uh, so let's just bridge that out. And in bridging it out, don't do this with the power on. Uh, in bridging it out, 
all that's going to happen here is that, uh, well, there's no LED there. The, the power is now going to be the same amount of current, uh, 150 milliamps, but it's just going to be through slightly less LEDs. So the power of the fitting would have gone down a bit. But we'll explore the power supply here and we'll see if it works, uh, if we can actually make that lower, if, if we were to want to do something like this. But the easiest fix here, th these are not aluminum core PCBs, that's just an ordinary laminate. The easiest fix is going to be to smear some compound by that. Even that, even literally siliconing it on with that thermal coupling glue to stick it on and then put it back in position would help. But as it is, let's just plug it in as it is right now and see if that has fixed it or not. That has fixed it, is now uh, back into normal operation. Right, so next thing, now that I've unplugged it again, I feel the need to say I've unplugged it again. Uh, let's disconnect the wires using a metal screwdriver. Do, do as I say, not as I do, as they say. I don't recommend using a metal bodied screwdrivers for electric work, particularly wiring that is still wired into the ceiling. So this, uh, that little blob of solder could have saved you the cost of getting an electrician out or replacing the whole light fitting. It could have got your light fitting running almost instantly. But uh, because one LED's failed, and you can see, you can see in here that uh, all the LEDs in that area have been grilled. It must have just not been pressing down properly onto the uh, back plate. This is where the thermal coupling could actually have saved this. Another thing I've noticed here is that the, uh, the white wire going from the power supply is actually quite crushed here. That's not good. Right, tell you what, let's get this driver off and we'll take a look inside the driver. Landfill lights. Someday someone might, I mean the eco hippies, if they, instead of just banning the things that make electronics work, maybe they should actually get involved in banning things like this, fittings that can't easily be serviced. Do something useful, you know? That's me being a bitch, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'm having a grump. I'm being a total Gen Xer. So can we get this cover off? Or is it? No, that is coming off. Oh, it's looking unbaked inside. Well, that's nice. Right, tell you what. I'm going to take a picture of this circuit board and we'll explore the circuit board, uh, which looks as though it's got filtering and stuff in it. It's quite neat. Uh, but we'll take a look at the circuit board and see if we can improve it in any way. If we can make a slight modification to it, that would make the LEDs last longer. One moment, please. And resume some considerable time later, because this circuit contains a mind bender on the other side. I'll show you it in a moment. It had me puzzling. I had to get the meter out. I also blew off another LED. I'm not sure how I managed that, but uh, another one gave up the ghost. It's another one that shows a dark skid mark in the back as well. So they've been grilled. Oh, you know what that was? That's because this wire was trapped underneath and it was actually lifting this side of the case off. That's why that one's uh, not been... In fact, they've, neither of them at that each end have actually been heat synced very well because they've been lifted up by this pinched wire. Interesting stuff. Anyway, what we have on the top of the circuit board is we have the incoming supply goes through a fusible resistor a com mode suppression choke, little filter capacitor and an inductor. There's a rectifier in the bottom, another filter capacitor, and then an absolute mind bender of a smoothing circuit. Then there's a inductor on this side that is pulsed by a buck regulator, uh, and then that charges up this capacitor, which the LEDs are across, and that provides the supply to the LEDs. So this is the uh, top of the circuit board reversed for convenience, because uh, that way it correlates to what's underneath. So here is the circuitry, and I'm going to zoom down this a bit, I think. There's the uh, fusible resistor on the other side, the comm mode suppression choke, the filter capacitor inductor, and then the bridge rectifier. Feeding it over to these two capacitors with three diodes underneath them, and I'll explain that in a moment. We've got a voltage divider based on three resistors here that's used for a voltage reference into the chip which uh, detects against over voltage if the circuitry, if the LEDs go open circuit, I think it's for. We've also got a little power supply for the chip coming from the positive rail which is via these two 300k resistors in series and a capacitor which just provides a low current general power supply for this. We have the output to the uh, circuitry with a uh, flyback diode here and a snubber across it, which is interesting. And then the capacitor for the LEDs uh, and 
a 100k resistor across that to make sure they, they don't glow dimly when uh, the unit is detecting site leakage current through switch wiring. And also to make sure it goes out abruptly instead of fading down super slowly. And then we've got a little filter capacitor and two uh, current sense resistors. Later on, I shall chop one of these out and we'll see what happens to the power when I uh, remove those. But let's look at the schematic, which is going to be in lots of slices because, wow, it's a mind bender. It is a super duper mind bender. Here's the mind bender bit. But let's start at the beginning. The mains comes in. 240 volts in this case. Uh, it goes through the fusible resistor, 2.2 ohm, through the com mode suppression choke, little filter capacitor, inductor, and then the bridge rectifier, and then another little filter capacitor on the other side. The reason for all these components that you wouldn't find in the cheapy imports is this is an attempt to uh, try and filter out electrical noise to comply with regulations here, which the great imports don't do. So normally on the output here, you just expect one big electrolytic capacitor and that would be it. Not two, uh, with this matrix of diodes. So here's what happens. Initially, when it powers up, it will charge these capacitors up. But because these capacitors are effectively, if you can imagine conventional current flow flowing through the capacitor, or charge the capacitor up uh, through this diode and charge this capacitor up, it puts the two capacitors in series, and each one will uh, charge up to half the peak mains voltage, which is about 170 volts. Then, as the rectified output comes back down again, these will only start powering the rail when it reaches that 170 volts because then each uh, capacitor, this one will uh, discharge via this diode onto the rail and this one will discharge via this diode onto the rail. And what that means is you end up with a really complex waveform which averages out, because I measured it, with a, a meter that's probably not really suited to that, but 244 volts instead of the usual 340. And you might wonder, why does it do this? I certainly did, and then I worked it out and did some tests, and it was what I was thinking it was. Power factor. Normally with power factor, the perfect power factor unity is when the current matches the voltage. So the current, the current would be drawn across the full sine wave. The reason many of these LED lamps have terrible power factor is because when they're charging up the capacitor, it only happens at the top of the rectified sine wave, so it only draws it in the little bits up here. And that is kind of happening with this. But because if you this is a, a rectified AC sine wave, so you're actually seeing all the humps on the, above the sort of zero volt level, it's charging the capacitor up to the capacitors in series up to 340 volts, but then the voltage across each one is 170 volts. So you end up with a sort of a sort of DC threshold here. So the voltage stays fairly high, but never quite dips down to zero, but never goes up. It doesn't go smoothly up to the top. What this means is that the current is drawn over quite a significant portion of the sine wave at the top, but you end up with very humpy, noisy DC, but that circuitry doesn't really bother about that because it's stepping the voltage down anyway. So you end up with the current is drawn over a significant portion of the sine wave with a wee peak at the top as it charges these capacitors up. It's very odd, but it ends up with the result is a 0.85 power factor, which is actually very good. It's normally 0 0.5, 0 0.85 is really, really good for these type of things. That is the only reason I can think they've done that. It's power factor. It's a mind bender. If you didn't get that, I don't blame you. It took me quite a time to work it out. It was even hard just drawing the schematic. And then I suddenly realised that another schematic ages ago that I gave up on because I couldn't work out what they were doing was doing the same thing. So here is the chip, which I should have written the number on. It is an MT7812. MT7812. 7812. Actually, you know what? I do have a data sheet for that. Uh, and it kind of fits in the screen. Uh, it just shows the simplest form, bridge rectifier, smoothing capacitor. Interestingly, they've used the, the power supply to also, one of the resistors to do double duty as part of voltage reference. I'll cover that in a moment. And then it's very simple in the output. It's a standard buck regulator with a current sent resistor. The circuitry is very similar to this, but it has a few extra frills. So here's the uh, here's the power supply for a start. Two 300k resistors in series to limit a very low current supply to the VCC pin, which is what powers the chip with respect to the zero volt rail. 
And that is a smoothing capacitor just for that. So that gives it a very low current power supply. There's also a voltage divider here which sets what they call the overvoltage protect, uh, which I believe is to detect when something's gone wrong and the voltage across the LEDs, maybe they've gone open circuit, the voltage is going too high, it will actually shut the unit down and stop going above that just to protect things like the capacitor against damage because the capacitor and the output is only rated 200 volts. And the output theoretically on that unit, where is the little cover? Uh, is theoretically about 80 volts max, they say. Um, so this is the bit that's actually switch limiting the current via an inductor, the 2 millihenry inductor. What happens is it switches down onto this rail here, which has got two sense resistors so it can measure the voltage across those to see how much current's flowing through that inductor. When it turns on, it pulls it down to the zero volt rail, but because the inductor has no magnetic field, it has to build it up, and initially it pushes back against which limits the current. So that limits the current through the LEDs, also charges this capacitor up for smoothing. Um, when it senses that the, it's reached a certain current threshold, the unit turns off, and then the magnetic field collapses in the inductor. But because this end was being pulled negative and that end was positive, now because it's collapsed in the opposite direction, this goes end goes positive, this end goes negative, and it finds its way through this flyback diode to the other end. So both when it's building up the magnetic field and when it's collapsing, it's effectively charging that capacitor and powering the LEDs. Oddly, I thought this was going to be a short key diode, but it's not. It's a standard high-speed diode ES1J. Uh, with a standard forward voltage of about 0.6 volts. And it is a little snubber network across it. Uh, a 100 ohm resistor and a low value capacitor just to clip any spikes to protect this diode. I wonder if that's because they were allowing for a short key. There's the 100k resistor that just uh, makes sure that that discharges quickly and the LEDs don't glow for a long time. And there is a, a, a low value capacitor just going to the zero volt rail just to provide a little extra layer of uh, filtering and perhaps uh, circuit stability. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug this into the hobby and we're going to measure the power and then I'm going to chop one of these off. So the value of that resistance goes from, well, what is that? It's uh, 1.35 ohms, uh, 2.7 ohms, two of them parallel. So divide that by two is 1.35 ohms. So I'm going to double that and we'll see what happens. It may go bang. I don't think it will. I think it will change the current. Uh, so let's zoom out. And we'll bring the hop in. And we'll look at this. I can't tell you how long it took me to work out that silly thing. That weird triple diode double capacitor thing. That was just weird. Right. So let's bring the hoppy up. And we'll stuff these wires haphazardly into here which is a completely non-compliant way of connecting. It's like the Cliff Quick test, but dangerous. And I shall plug it in. And the thing lights brightly. And the hoppy says 11.6 watts. Lovely power factor, 0.85. Great. So 11.6 watts. Right, tell you what. I'll note that down. Notepad. 11.6 watts. Now, are we going to be able to half that? Does this thing want to charge? No, that's fine. Uh, right, where's that sense resistor? There's the sense resistor down here. I'm going to lop one of them off right now. Either I'm just breaking one like that. That'll do. That looks like it's mostly taking one out. Okay. Now we'll see what the power changes to, or if it just goes bang because it doesn't like it. It might go bang, it's happened before. Uh, plug it in. The power has now gone down to 5.6 watts, so it is pretty much half the power. It's gone down to yeah, 5.6 watts. And that means that panel would last a lot longer with that resistor. But unfortunately, it's not an easy hack. You literally have to take everything to bits, get that circuit board out, look for those two current sense resistors, always a low value, like one or two ohms. Um, and then you have to remove one of them, uh, one of the two in parallel. But that kind of worked. 
and that fitting would last for ages. So lots of ways you could improve the life of this. One is to put some sort of thermal compound in the back here to couple it across. Another thing you could sneakily do, just one diode in each, you could just chop it off and put a bridge across it. That would reduce the heat dissipation from the whole section. And this uh, regulator would just regulate down the current to that. It wouldn't be bothered by a slight uh, reduction in the overall voltage across the LEDs. Um, or you could just go the full thing and uh, and modify this, or just put in a different one, rated for a lower power light. So many things. But failing that, if it's blown up completely, you do have the option of going to online. And uh, what they sell on eBay is retrofit power supplies and LED modules with magnets that you just physically stick stick it to the back plate with magnets. And it's basically a circular circuit board with the magnetic supports and no insulation, so don't touch it. But it sticks on the magnets, and you either use the existing power supply or you use the power supply they supply with it. Um, some of them even have the built-on linear current regulator, although that's going to get quite hot. So there's, a, there's options. It's not all instant landfill. And well, hopefully soon uh, they'll start clamping down and the creation of landfill like this because it's such a waste. Oh, here's another thing that's worth mentioning. You want uh, a bulkhead light, but you live in a mobile home or you want something that can power from 12 volts, get one of these, rip everything out, get 12 volt tape uh, and just put sections of 12 volt tape inside it. Uh, as many as you want for the power rating or multiple ratings, coloured if you want. And then you just run 12 volt supply into it and that's you got a 12 volt light. Because um, this uh, these reflectors produce really good linear uh, illumination. I feel a need to prove that. One moment, please. And an instant pronto bang it in style. Here's some very badly installed LED tape. Just a few sections, 12 volt tape. Uh, you could use a diode or two in series if you wanted to. Make it more or less likely to be damaged by the sort of charging voltage if you're using a vehicle. But I'd also recommend taking a bit of time, short sections, avoiding and take, putting it across so that it's not sitting above holes and things like that because that's going to affect its heat dissipation. Also laying it in better than I have here. But uh, that's it. It's, they're three sections wired in uh, parallel. And I shall put the cover on and I shall turn the light off just to show you how even the illumination is. So I'll take the exposure off uh, and turn the light off. Oh, that is excessively bright looking on the camera, but you know, it is basically, you're getting a good even illumination over it because these things are just very good. It looks great here. For those three stripes, you can't see the stripes. All you actually see here is the sort of the even illumination. So the light is coming back. Watch your eyes. And that is it. So uh, thanks to Thomas Nagy for sending uh, this unit. It was actually quite interesting to explore it. Kind of, it forced me to investigate the double capacitor, triple diode thing and how it actually helps the power factor. It also reminded me just how crap some of these lights from even prominent brands are, how some of them are no better than the grey imports from China. Uh, but there we go. Interesting stuff. That is one of those little... Uh, non-user serviceable, well not except to us, uh, lights that just seems to be flooding the market.